welcome back to Get's All Talk. And we're here, we're in the house of the extraordinary artist here in El Paso, Ho Baron. Did I pronounce that right, bro? Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, he's an artist here in El Paso, known for his whimsical sculptures, and um, we're lucky to be here. And it's actually his birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, th- <laughs> thanks. What a coincidence, right? I know. Yeah. We just. I'm 81 today. That's f- fucking outrageous. <laughs> I, I mean, I... Do I count that high? <laughs> right, 81's, 81 years of wisdom, bro. Seems well, really that's happy. that's questionable. You know, I mean, I still fall on my face. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, it happens, bro. It happens well, to the best of us. And the worst, too. They just need to fall on their face more. Right. <laughs> they deserve it a little more. You well, they're the yeah. worst, right? Right. We're the best, of course. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, you are, man. You have some extraordinary art, and thank you for showing me around. It's um, it's beautiful. A lot of people, um, I guess, like you said, some people here in El Paso are scared of your artwork. Well, that's their problem. You know, some people are scared of dolls. Some people are scared of... I'm scared of the Republicans, frankly, if you want to know who I'm scared of. I mean, they're... they're I don't like the word evil, but they're really... Uh, and they're not even contrary. They're greedy. And uh, they use stupid people to keep them in power. But we shouldn't talk too much about politics, right? Yeah, we can go on to hours about, like, I mean, America's I, pretty, pretty bad right now. I've written a hundred and about 135 letters to the editor um, against Republicans since Reagan. Reagan started this all. and uh, Oh, the Reaganomics kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah tri- trickle down. Trickle down. It was really piss on you and uh, trickle up. And, and, yeah, and I, I know a lot of horrible stuff started happening during that time, like especially during like the the kind of drug war kind of thing. Well, they made that up. You talking about the drug war in the South? The yeah, drug, not just the the drug, just all over America, like acting like they're creating a drug war against um, drugs, but then drugs and a lot of it was skyrocketed, and a lot of it was um, uh, a war against poor people because mostly it was is poor guys in the cities, poor black guys in the cities. And it filled the prisons over nothing, possession, which Biden just let it go, possession. Anyway, you want to talk about art? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could. Talking about politics could get pretty um, well, pretty I, intense. So, well, but, I, I'm, I'm not intense, but I, I really have strong feelings. I, I've traveled, like, in a lot of countries around the world, and um, and it kind of broadens your, your view. Um, if you're outside the country and you can look back, and also seeing another system and another culture in another in in another place, and and the cultures and the countries of the world are wonderful. The governments are crappy, you know. <laughs> Mostly, many of them are crappy. You know, it's the old trickle up stuff. You know. Yeah. So you think most governments are still just for the the elites? The, well, they've got to balance a bit because if it's too obvious that they're criminal, then the people rebel. Rebel. <clears throat> or they ought to rebel, you know. But, it, I mean, look what's happening to the women in Iran right now with um, just because the morality police, you know, w- w- this woman was killed because she didn't have her scarf right. And that's what started the whole thing. And and the women want their rights. And also the people in Iran want to get rid of the, relig- the religious, uh, a religious-oriented government, which is a dictatorship. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people just use that religion as an excuse for power, and it's easy to control people with um with those mandates, I guess. Yeah, well, I think a lot of, a lot of people like El Paso as a as a city there where religion is a real strong force. You know, Hispanic city that is primarily Catholic, and um, and people go to the churches because it's a form of community, and um, and people are looking for community of some sort or another. Mm-hmm. Not on their in their neighborhood, <laughs> but it's easy to go someplace once a week. And anyway, that's another subject, right? I mean, that is fascinating. The human mentality. What why what drives people to want to well, be in these settings? Well, it's her- herd mentality, right? Uh, I mean, we're we're not really taught to be by ourselves very much. I I don't think. Yeah, and then plus we're apes. I mean, we evolved, well, I think we evolved from apes. I don't know. Like, well, I know we evolved from apes. You know. <laughs> yeah, and then so we're social. Somebody creatures. said, "Why are there still apes?" <laughs> hey, <laughs> they're apes. We know a bunch of apes, actually. Right, and then yeah. it seems yeah. like humans are devolving into more ape-like now. Um, 
they're just herded. You know, that's propaganda works. And it's real, real simple. Fox TV, you know, repetition works. You say it over and over again and, and you believe it, you know. Same with religion. You say that there's a God and you hear it all your life. There must be a God. Well, why? You know, who created God? <laughs> that was my father's line when I was a kid, who created God? And that made me thinking, you know. Oh, that's nice. So your father was very um, open. He was, open. A, he was an open-minded guy. That's good. I think that's important for kids. I mean, it's... I think it's important for everybody, and not not allow themselves to be herded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. obviously, you haven't been herded. Your art is a is amazing, man. It's always like ever when I would ever I would pass by on um, Piedra Street since your house is right here in El Paso, like and seeing that sculpture of Venus, man, it would always it would just be Wait, so magical to which, me. Which one is Venus? Is, is that the, what it's called? The one right outside with um the big one. Yeah, the big one. With the vines on it? Yeah. Uh, no, I call it the water god. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay, it was, it was kind of like, I, I had trouble with the historic society in the past. Um, what was that? That was over a mural in my garage door, like in the 80s. Because <clears throat> I won't get into it too much. But, but the, I had to get permission from the historic society, a historic commission in El Paso, because I'm in a historic district. Oh, the, okay. Right, um, and I had to. Um, so I called it a water god, and I said it's removable. Actually, there's a sheet of plastic o o underneath the whole thing, and it can just be lift lifted up and put in a in a dump. You know, although it probably weighs about three four thousand pounds. There's a lot of cement. It's hollow. A couple of tons. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, well. A friend of mine built a um, a metal structure. And we put uh, we put uh, expanded metal around it uh, and and chicken chicken uh, chicken wire anyway and then we uh, we put cement on it and uh, so it is hollow and um, anyway uh, I have a video on YouTube of my uh, of my uh, water god um, I had about six or seven videos but anyway Carrie Ann my wife. Uh, well, we thought about just leave the best one, the simplest one, you know. And uh, anyway, I tried video. I tried making videos <laughs> of my of my sculptures, and I put myself in them, and and all. And but I, I was, you know, I, I wasn't pro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, everything takes some knowledge, especially when you're working with technology. Yeah, that, especially that's a new field. Well, that yeah, that's that's what I like about art is the technology is very simple. Um, it's a piece of paper, it's a canvas, you know, it's, it can be, you know, a real simple thing, uh, or a sculpture. It can be, t you know, look at the cross. Can you think of a, a, a simpler structure, a piece of wood with right. a piece of wood crossing <laughs> it? You know, Hey, that's yeah. sculpture. Hey, let's worship that thing. <laughs> re re it's... Remember the movie, um, the gods must be crazy where the Coca-Cola bottle comes out of the sky in oh, australia seen it. Oh, oh it's a beautiful it's a beautiful movie the coca-cola bottle falls out of the sky and um and the indigenous people worship it <laughs> oh yeah man. just something different just something different. yeah well <laughs> and it came from the sky oh, well so people want i guess people need <laughs> beliefs people and it's ironic that there are a lot of people that put their beliefs before science and and science is so proven. Science goes through rigorous tests before yeah. anything is anything is, you know, acceptable in the science world. And religion, you can <laughs> you can take a piece of cloth and say, "Hey, this was Jesus's cloth," <laughs> and get people to believe that and worship. And, yeah, and they'll put it in a case in the in the in the Vatican, <laughs> right, and have thousands of people view it every day and worship it. <laughs> Pretty funny. Huh? Yeah, it's just crazy too that in the in religion, it says thou shalt not have an idol and stuff, and then they're God. How many working. idols do we have? Yeah, exactly. Like freeways like are idols. <laughs> it's ridiculous freeways. Yeah, it's getting a little ridiculous. And you're right in, in the this... center of it, off of Piedra. So you're right in the the heart of all the the nasty pollution. <laughs> yeah, man. Sorry about that. Yeah, but a lot of the pollution. Supposedly, the pollution starts. I read this a long time ago. I don't know how valid it is. The pollution starts over the over the border, over the bridges where the cars are idling, and then uh, 
and then it travels through the central part of the city over my house toward Fort Bliss dur- during the day. I heard that. I don't know how true it is. Yeah, I mean, it, I'll believe it. <laughs> those things they have like their own part, like um, they form their own mass and stuff. So I guess they just follow like um, whatever. Well, air... the, yeah, some kind of yeah, right. It has to do with the mountain, I'm sure. Yeah, and the and and the breezes around the mountain. Yeah, so we're all getting toxic fumes at some point. Yeah, but I've made it. I've been back in El Paso 41 years. I left here when I was in my 20s. Yeah, and you went to the Peace Corps, correct? Yeah, I went in the Peace Corps. There, I didn't go. It was Vietnam period, and I did. I I was accepted by the Peace Corps, and I had been drafted. And um, so you were able to avoid um, conflict. Yeah, ex- yeah, except I was in a pretty in crazy country, Nigeria. You know, but I mean, that's crazy to me. That's the way, you know, when I was there, there were 50 million people. Now there are 150 million people. Like when I was there, Mexico was 50 million people. Now it's 150 million people. And those are figures from a few years ago. (laughs) Do I have a memory? And who knows if they're even like accurate too, though. Right. (laughs) No, I was in my second line was, do I have a memory? I have to look in my wallet for my name, you know. (laughs) Yeah, man. Um, and when you were in Nigeria, how, how was it? Was it, well, you was said a, it was crazy? Or no, was... no, it was a different way of life, you know? I mean, a totally different way of life. It was, and not only that, it was in, um, in rainforest where it rained. The rainy seasons were like serious heavy rains. And, so you couldn't even go outside or you just well, had to make do? Well, you could, you got wet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't mind getting wet. Yeah. Do we get rain here? Nah, no. A few, I, a few clouds <laughs> here and there. The little, little five minute, like yeah, rain passing I, through, and then and we're and good. rains on the cross on the other side of the street, but not on my side. Yeah, but then we freak out here, and as soon as those clouds come, we everything slows down, and we don't know how to drive. Well, it's that damn freeway, you know. I mean, they say my my brother has this theory. He says they say eight hundred thousand people in El Paso, and my brother says, don't you feel like the freeway has like doubled in traffic in the last couple of years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there has to be more than 800,000 people here. No, oh, exactly. And then you have all the just people passing through in Juarez and then Fort Bliss. You have all the army oh, people. So yeah, I don't, know if Fort, I don't know if Fort Bliss is included in our... Uh, in the census? In our census. I, don't, I, I just don't know. Right. What is Fort Bliss now? 35,000, 40,000. Hey, what happens in Fort Bliss? We have we have no idea what happens. <laughs> what happens in Fort Bliss stays in Fort Bliss. Oh, like, man. Crazy right stuff. Right at happens. one point, they had 10,000, what, refugees from somewhere, from Haiti maybe. And then another point, they had 10,000 of something else. Yeah. And, and we see planes passing over El Paso continually and, and helicopters. You know, I mean, who are these people? <laughs> Yeah, and we're just we're just quiet about it as long as we're co- we're we're comfortable. We don't need to need to question anything, right. you know. Yeah, cops are fine as long as they're in our rear view mirror, or yeah, as exactly. long as they're as long as they're not in our rear view yeah, mirror. Yeah, exactly. As long as they're. Well, I messed up that line. <laughs> hey, we all understand. You saved it. You saved it. <laughs> Ass backwards. <laughs> hey, so it's why okay. I make why do I make art is the question. Um, I um, art is fun. And we like to look for fun in life. And, um, and I, most things in life that are fun, they don't pay us for it, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, cooking, gardening, making art, walking down the street, um, making, yeah, I got cut off. I was about to say making love. You know, <laughs> they, they don't pay us for that. Some hey, people, well, some people do some, get paid for that. But. Yeah, <laughs> but what, what are they, a point zero 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 one percent of the population? Yeah. You know, let them live. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, and I'm gl- glad you have fun with this. I mean, obviously okay. you have a lot of fun with the art, but obviously it's like there's something very well, I, I never made money about it. I never made any money. I couldn't make a living with my art. You, you weren't able if, to make a living off your art? N- n- no. I I managed to, well, my family is Dave's Loans downtown. And when I came back to El Paso in 1980, I had been a librarian in Philadelphia. I didn't like Philadelphia. My girlfriend had moved out. I was miserable. My family said, come to El Paso. We'll pay you $15,000 a year. That's what I was making then. It was in 19... 
1980. So I came to El Paso and I lived in a building downtown that didn't have running water. Um, an old bank building that's been torn down. So like so many great buildings in this city have been torn down. For, for what? For some stadium that's empty junk, half the junk, year? Junk, junk, junk. And now they want to build an arena, which is junk. Uh, you know, they allotted, what, $175 million, and now they figure it's going to cost over $500 million? Yeah, and where does this money go? Like, who knows if it's actually... Oh, it goes to Hunt and Foster and a couple other guys, you know. I, I have a show down at the El Paso Museum of Art right now, like... It's a super show. that A lot of work is down there. Uh, what's the name of the show? Gods for Future Religions. Well, that's what my book is called, Gods for Future Religions. And I've always called my figures Gods for Future Religions because my, my, my pieces are bronze. And someday in, in hundreds or thousands of years, whoever's left in, and survived this, the nonsense we've cr created with plastic <laughs> and bombs, and militaries. Anyway, um, what was well, I don't know what I was saying. But just why you create them? Um, oh, okay. So the bronzes. So the someday in the very, f very far future, they will be found and they might be worshipped, like the story of the 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 coke bottle that fell from yeah. the sky. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but at least this is, this is a little more. They're a little more cooler and a little more interesting to be worshiping than a coke bottle, though. Well, uh, what you know, if you don't know, what the hell? You know, a coke bottle is must be a, oh, really true. intriguing if you've never, <laughs> you've never seen one. That's true, and then you won't know what exactly it's saying either. It's just like some weird calli it would look uh, like calligraphy, calligraphy or yeah, something. It would like... be calligraphy. <laughs> That's fascinating. Man. Okay, so I I've just my wagon is full and I'm ready, you know. And it's kind of satire because because I I am not going to replace the major religions in the world by any stretch. <laughs> It's a, it's satire, and I'm a satirist, and I think most things need to be satirized because most most things need to be made fun of, and if you satirize it, it people might it's a little more has a little more impact than than if you say it as fact. Yeah, you exactly. know. If you get uh, yeah, if you could get people to laugh or smile or like some kind of like it, it goes into your mind a little more. Give that if you well, get that emotion. Well, you know, if it's a story or if it's a piece of art, or I mean, that's why there are that's why there is art because art art's been a form of communication ever since cave drawing. You know, uh, I mean that they just found a comb. I just read about it. A comb that is what like the oldest thing they found it in the Middle East. The oldest thing they've ever seen. A comb made out out of bone. A piece of a comb. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, so it's satire. God's for future religions. And also it's catchy. You know, who is this guy to say his, his sculptures are God's for future religions? Right, no, that's an epic, that's an epic name too. And, yeah. and so you're just satiring like religion? You don't really believe in religion? No, it's, it's a form of, uh, of, of herd, ment herd mentality. Um, uh, really, I think I think most churches are like uh, communities. Just give them money, and they'll accept you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> give them money. Oh yeah, man. That's why churches they're always need money, <laughs> and they don't donation, even but... pay taxes. <laughs> fug them, right? fug them, fug them. <laughs> That's why a lot of people. Hey, some people open up churches because they know it's very lucrative. Oh, I mean, yeah. look at all those mega churches out there. Oh, That's yeah, crazy. we got a big one here in town. Oh, the, the abundant one? Are yeah, you the about? abundant thing, and it's all about give me money. Oh, yeah, and, and then he's know. out in his like nice car and a fancy Oh, he's got house, an airplane. You know? He's got an airplane. He's got an airplane? Yeah, he's got an airplane. Oh, that's that's insane, and I, mean, I, can't, I, I can't believe people can't see it, you know? like it's crazy. They don't want to see it because they found a community. Oh, okay, so like it's all said, about... Um, Looking, so, looking for somebody, you know, looking for uh, a, a belonging to something. Do you think that's just like kind of ignorant? The more I'm maybe sorry to say, do you may, think it's an maybe ignorance? it's human nature, you know? Yeah, like like we were talking about, we are apes, and so we do have well, that. there are nations, there are states within, and counties, and cities, and neighborhood organizations, and I mean, all of them are a form of social social organization yeah so and we I, can't escape it and art and creating art is a personal thing and the, I, I i like personal personal activities because 
I, I don't know, maybe they're, they're more personal, they're more pensive, they're more, um, you know, walking, gardening, uh, cooking, um, dancing, dancing, I wonder, singing, you know, all these, all these forms of human expression are, um, are really gratifying, but yeah, they don't pay. <laughs> but yeah, they do with they they pay with gratification. They pay with gratification, and they're a relief, release a release, you know. But some of them have to do with. I have a community. I mean, I know I know a lot of the artists in town. It's not a tight community because it's a lot of people who are doing their own thing, you know. But but when I meet other artists, I I know. I know we've all created sort of on a similar level. It's like where we lose ourselves. Musicians really do that. I mean, they, they lose, they, their creativity is in sound, which is immediately gone, which is immediately gone, which is yeah. interesting, you know. Um, just, they just have that moment and then it's... And so, yeah, so when they die, all they have is their instrument. And when an artist dies, he's got a, he's got a, a collection of his work and his family ends up having to deal with it and they don't know how to deal with it because the <laughs> artist didn't know how to deal with it. And marketing art is like, you know, it's a real personal thing and it's a real hard thing. And, and who buys art, you know? Yeah, only the elites and they're only getting what's in fashion or trying well, that's, to money yeah. launder. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point there, Stone. <laughs> Yeah, the no, I mean, the elite, yeah. but yeah, well, they'll they'll spend uh, million, millions of dollars in auction houses in New York, right? Yeah. To buy to buy an Andy Warhol, you know, big deal. <laughs> yeah, his. I don't think that's worth. It. I mean, honestly, your art well, so, well, seems a lot more. Uh, yeah, but worth em, the, emphatic, like a lot more effort and just a lot more creativity and just like worth worth is what somebody will pay you for it. Yeah, you know, if that's I horrible. people. I worked in the pawn shop for 10 years, Dave's Loan. It was fun. It was, and I love the people that came in there and the. Yeah, and you're fine. The pawn shop, the. the it's famous. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's funny. Famous. It's kind of kooky, I guess you could say. Or oh, something? it's famous. It's, um, <laughs> it's, um, it's worth a walk through because my brother was not an artist, but he, he bought strange art. He's my age almost, and, um, his son is running the business. And, um, and the artifacts of all kinds are just incredible. And uh, anyway. So yeah, it's uh, almost like a little museum, like a little is a, like Ripley's it, museum, it, like it, in a vet, you know? It, it is. Yeah. And uh, Larry had, uh, my brother had uh, Pancho Villa's trigger finger in the window, in the window for a long time. And of course it was wax, but there was a little note that said it was Pancho Villa's trigger, <laughs> Pancho Villa's trigger finger. Yeah, I think I remember that. I would kind of get freaked out when I was younger. Yeah, was a spoof, you know. <laughs> anyway, right now there's a controversy. I just saw this today on a Las Cruces um, TV station, which I didn't even know there was a Las Cruces. Free access, I think. It's free access TV station. Yeah. Uh, oh, I never heard about it. It's on like um the what's it called the antenna. Or... I I don't know anything about the details. I saw it this morning for the first time, uh, and and there was a guy complaining because the pawn shop has a mummy in a in a case on the floor in the pawn shop, and this guy complains that there's a body in Dave's lawns, and <laughs> he's pissed off. <laughs> He's probably really pissed off at his wife, so he's taking it out on right, this poor, this, this poor little <laughs> mummy on the floor in Dave's loans. <laughs> Jerk <laughs> off. <laughs> hey, I mean, it, it takes guy, all he kinds. He can't fight back. He can't fight it back, so it's easy. Oh, you can. You, you can. Flip yeah. him a finger and, right. and then walk away. Don't create a fight. Just walk away. Right. I'll try to. I mean, because he I'm, might have an AR-15. Oh yeah, that's true. That's so sad. Like, you can't just have like a normal little fist fight anymore, and just get like walk away anymore. You know, you never know if someone's gonna have a knife or a gun. What nowadays. about an auto twenty-five automatic? Right. You know? Like, how do you get? A hold I mean, of that? anything bigger than that should be illegal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, but what kind of gun gun people am I talking to right now? No telling. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's. It is. It is what it is. The guns in this country is insane. Like how many AR-15s out in the, are out in the public? Like 
15 million or something like that. I, okay. I, I, I come out with figures as if I know I'm talking, I'm talking <laughs> about, you know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, you're just, you're a scholar now, so oh, yeah. as long as you act like you know what you're talking about, right? That's well, that's talking, the majority of the the news people. They just throw out figures too. I bet mm, they better, yeah. But they're they're liable. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I don't think I'm liable. <laughs> okay, take one of my sculptures <laughs> if you're really if you angry. Could carry it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even give away a sculpture. You know. No, it's not. They're beautiful. I mean, it's your work. I mean, okay, so what's going to happen to my work? is strangely at my age they offered me a show downtown for six weeks uh, at, at the art museum and i've got a lot of work down there and it's a beautiful show and right next to me is a salvador dolly show oh, and that's, that's why that's they perfect that's why they picked me because who could they pair with salvador dolly in el paso but me and i have a lot of work so anyway they they did a real nice show Oh yeah, and I think you give um, Dolly a run for his money, man. You got something. Well, Dolly's stuff. thing is a story, and you have to follow from picture to picture. Dolly supposedly did um, did the graphics for a hundred books or something like that. He must have been a really, really busy guy, um, yeah. Dolly. But his his paintings are unbelievable. He 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 drew picture books, like for kids. I don't know the details. I just read. Probably oh, okay. in that room, it probably has a little story about Dolly, and maybe it says what. Yeah, I need to go check it out. That's my phone. Oh, that's fine. It happens. Somebody's calling to say happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. That was my cousin. Oh, who nice. Li- who lives in Vegas. Yee. Well, I, f- I guess some people like Vegas. Yeah, we are where... We are where we're at. Right. <laughs> people, say, people say, why are you in El Paso? I say, you got to be somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's where I'm at. It's what you make of it, you know? It's who you are, where your head's at, and how positive. It's, it's a matter of trying to be positive, you know? Hell yeah, that's and a good and good advice. I mean, as long as you stay positive, I yeah, mean, you can you, take whatever comes at you. You still fall on your face. Like I told you, I've fallen on my face several times real recently, and I don't know... Um, and I blame it on other things every time. It was yeah. my dog yesterday, <laughs> and I fell. He pulled me over, yeah, and I'm not going to walk him again. I, it's a resolution. I can't. Cause he's dangerous, yeah, but he's so lovable. But yeah. he's so lovable, you know. Yeah, but big dogs sometimes they don't know their own strength, and when they get oh. hyper, they just. Boom. What kind of dog do you have? Oh, I have little dogs. I don't have to worry oh, about that. Okay. I have um, a Shih Tzu and a Chihuahua. Oh, so, <laughs> oh real geez. easy, little like fit in your hand kind of thing. So I don't have to worry about get, getting Sh- pulled Shih Tzu, over. Shih Tzus, Shih Tzus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Shih Tzu, the Shih Tzu doesn't do little Shih Tzus everywhere, but <laughs> but the Ch- Chihuahua I found on the street on yeah. um, like a couple of weeks ago. So he's still kind of was he nice? Is he nice? Oh yeah, he's, he's, he's skittish. Sweet. Uh, skittish, of course, yeah, but he, he's time. a sweetheart. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, hell yeah, and you've rescued some some cats too, right? Or yeah, we have. Yeah, way. we've had several experiences in carry carry in soft on animals, but um, but when you take them in, then then you then you end up with a problem, you know, and you don't know what to do unless you really say you said okay with a, a cat that just came along. Yeah, like yeah, that also happened too recently. I was walking. Okay, well you got to stop. You got to you got to get hard now. I mean, yeah, there's nothing now else I have. You could, now yeah. I don't have room anymore, so unfortunately I do have to. But I, I did feel bad because they literally came up to me, like you know, like some yeah, usually. I know, when, I know. Uh, so yeah. I was like, "All right, fine." But this one came up to you and said, yeah. and said "Take me home." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, he, that's, that's sweet, you know. They're kids. Yeah, the yeah. mentality of cats and dogs is like two and a half year olds. No, exactly. Did, did you ever hear that, kids. that that uh-huh. equation? That that uh, animals, in terms of humans, they're they're. They're like two and a half year olds, and the humans at two and a half year olds take off, you know, yeah. when they're three and they're four and they're five, and they become crazy at eleven. Anyway, anyway. yeah, and they but stay then animals, crazy. animals just stay in that state. I forever. heard, I heard a woman sing the other day, and she, um, and it was a show downtown with um, Gene Gene Keller and Doug Adams, um, and they're local folk singers. And they're they're friends, you know, and a woman that I had never heard before, and she was such a great entertainer. And she's from Crucis, and I can't remember her name, but one of her songs was "Where did all these terrible people come from?" 
Oh, yeah, man, especially nowadays. Yeah, where did all these <laughs> terrible people come from? And a great song, and she did it with humor, you know. Yeah, it was and, pretty funny. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. Okay, so the reason I do art is because it's fun. And, That's the main um, reason? Yeah. You don't, and have, I, a, and you don't I, have a message or anything that you're trying to get out to people? My, my message is everything we've said in the last 45 minutes. Oh, okay. Was, <laughs> no, I my message is be, my message is if you're going to be if you're going to do art, be creative. You know, don't do something because you think it's going to sell because it probably won't sell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you people know, can tell like when you're uninspired. Okay, so something cool happened to me. I started to say this earlier. Uh, um, they offered me the art show downtown. And and so I have that show running until mid mid January. So if anybody's listening to this until mid January, please go visit my show. It's free. Uh, it's at the Art Museum, which is closed Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday because of they're being they're being chiseled by somebody I know in the city council. So it's uh, closed three days now. Yeah, it's closed three days because their their budgets have been cut. They haven't had a director in three years, in two years, sorry, and they haven't had a curator. And the assistant curator is running the the museum, and the oh, downtown lot and the downtown man. library has downtown library has been closed up. <clears throat> and from what I understand, they're going to put the collection in the basement, which I used to work at that library, and I don't know where they would put the collection yeah. in the basement. And putting people in the basement to find books. You know, because it's going to be the Mexican American Cultural Cultural Center, which should have been a standalone building with parking. There's no parking downtown. Yeah, I mean, oh man, this is so uh, just yeah. management of budget and just uh, I don't know. Do you think that's there's a lot of corruption in the city hall here? Or there's friends. You know, hey, you're running for office. Let me give you ten thousand dollars, and then. And then when you win, because I gave you ten thousand dollars, hey, remember me? I gave you ten thousand dollars. I'm I've got a project going. I need your help. Yeah, man, it's pretty horrible and it's pretty yeah, obvious. Pe- yeah, they're bought. You know, just now this woman Silverstein lost to Fierro today. Yeah, that was today. Silverstein had a giant budget because they wanted her in. Oh, that's good. But she lost. She lost. Oh, yeah, fortunate. Good, fortunately, there was a lot of backing for good people in all three of these elections no, that's from good. from my understanding i i didn't know too much about one of the one of the areas but. yeah I, I interviewed a group called um justicia fronteriza recently and they're trying to get more um like i guess advocacy in our in our in our voting here in el paso they're trying to limit the amount of that an money individual that, yeah 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 but it's I, I don't see how they can enforce that because two members of the same kind con- Let's say you're limited to a thousand dollars. Two members of the same family give a thousand dollars. That's two thousand dollars. I I don't That's know. True. Yeah, I don't know it how. It could be they... tricky. And then also you could use like little businesses if you have some. Like I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. People find ways. There's always loopholes. It, uh, yeah, well, people look for loopholes. Loopholes, that's for sure. Right, right and that's what lawyers are for. <laughs> if you get looking a good for loopholes, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. But yeah. yeah. Um, but in back of your art, your um, your sculptures like okay. weigh a ton, right? Okay, so Co- the Kohler Foundation has gotten in touch with me, and and this is what's a, the Kohler Foundation? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay, is. thank you, thank you. <clears throat> they um, look for collections of self-taught artists who are about to die, and will give the work that they give the work to them, and they'll in turn put the work in museums around the country. So yeah, that's kind of yeah, so, it's kind of cool, but kind of sad because I mean, so well, just, I'm, your art's going to be. Yeah, I'm giving all my work away to the Kohler Found through the Kohler Foundation, some to some place. It may be something like a museum. It might be a garden or something. You know. Yeah, um, <clears throat> So it, so the plaque will say, Artist Ho Baron by Kohler Foundation. So the Kohler Foundation is the people that make the toilets, K-O-H-L-E-R. You know, you know, you know, you know that name. Yeah. They make the toilets, they make the sinks. It's a giant cor- company, giant oh, okay, company. Okay. And so they created this foundation? They for- created, because the wife of the original owner who made the bill liked liked um, intuitive art, art cr- creative art, and um, not cliche art. Oh, 
Right. And they felt like, and they deal with about 25 artists at a time. And um, I think part of my appeal was I have, I have uh, bronze sculptures and they're going to pay for shipping. And so my work is going to be, now, so this is yet to happen. Yeah, I mean, this you're is, still around, this, so this it's is gonna, a, it's, No, well, not only that, I have to create an inventory of all my work with good photographs. And I'm a photographer, and, um, and I already have a lot of photographs, but I have holes of things that I need, I, need, uh, so I need to fill. I need to make more photographs. That's why you see pieces on, on the floor, because I'm moving things around. But unfortunately, at my age, I can't, um, I can't move heavy things now. So uh, I'm going to have somebody help me. I have to look for somebody to help me. Oh yeah, I mean, and around, and uh, maybe even more because some of your sculptures seem like they weigh. They're, they're uh, quite, that piece, that cement piece, that oval piece right there is about a, is exactly 140 pounds. It's cement, but it's hollow. Well, uh, I can't lift 140. No one person can lift 140 pounds. Yeah, man. Especially, it would take two people on a, uh, on each side, right? Uh, yeah, and especially since it's art, you want to handle it delicately. Oh, you yeah. Need yeah, cement ships, and then the piece mm. is ruined. Yeah, exactly. And, and, just... and you have to be careful that when you set it down, you set it down flat. <laughs> Hell yeah, well. So I got into well, sculpture over the years. I went from photography and drawing into... Uh, into um, and I, I tried some painting, I tried some printmaking, and, uh, and, I, and I like the process in sculpture, where, because it's not just, you know, you put it on paper. I've got a lot of things on paper, and I've thrown away a lot of things on paper. My, uh, I've thrown a lot of art away, <laughs> a lot. Ah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but the, the bronzes can survive. But all the pieces on paper, if I didn't do anything during, with them, during, I did... I'm, you know, I wrote some plays. I wrote some one act plays. And uh, uh, what happened to those? They're in my files. Oh, okay, I was like, ah, oh, you didn't throw those away, did no, you? No, I didn't like, throw them away. Okay, but, that's but, tight. But but yeah, they'll be thrown away. Ah yeah. man, I'm sure. Like you should get someone to read them. I'm sure people. Yeah, would but my, put my father them died, and he had papers. He had he had written, he had handwritten letters to me. Anyway, I didn't save all his things. The things uh, I didn't go back. I never get went back to read all my father's uh, writings, and he, you know. Anyway, a piece of art is is easy. That's one reason I got into. I liked art was because you could show off your work, because if you hand somebody a piece of written, a short story or a piece of literature, very few people are going to sit down and read it. There aren't that many readers. Yeah, and especially people, nowadays. And it have to be a really good friend of yours who would sit down and care enough to read about it. <laughs> yeah. But if you show them a picture, hey, yet a lot of you like my picture, you know. So you were so before you got into art and sculpturing, you were um, a writer. Yeah, I'm still a writer. I mean, I wrote I wrote that book, Gods for Future Religions. <clears throat> I wrote the book to promote my uh, sculpture, and then I found that I had to prom promote the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no both. there's no end. <laughs> there's the, no end to the promotion, but No, no. Otherwise, you know. Hey, but um they people could purchase your book, correct? Online. Yeah, or? online, Amazon. Okay, Present awesome. presently for fifteen dollars. And actually they cost me fifteen dollars to produce. I had a ah. thousand oh, well, I had a thousand printed. I'm gonna give you a copy. Oh well, thank you man. But you should sell them for a little bit more. I mean if just at least Nah, there's a big difference between 15 and 20. Yeah, that's true. Maybe two more dollars, you know, just so you can nah, make some. Out of nah, it. then you got to deal with ones. And, oh, are you a good guy? You really just want your, your work out there? Yeah, then. I got I got all these books I got to get rid of, and I'm happy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I end up getting paid from Amazon. I, I get paid $12, I think. Oh, man, so then it costs you, so you're, mm -hmm. no matter what, you're not going to make. make I'm, not, I'm not even going to make my money back. But so sold, you hear that people support him because he, he he's doing his work because he loves it and because he wants. Yeah, I'm to just happy fun, to man. get my work, my books out of my house. You know, yeah. I still have like 500 books out of a thousand. Oh yeah, you know, sure. that's, that's ridiculous. No man, I mean, you're... I I did a book about El Paso when I first moved back here in 1980. I did a book of, uh, uh, I I had a dark room in in the basement here where we're talking. And I, it, it's called El Paso a Hoverview, and um, like an overview, but it's a hoverview because I'm ho. Um, anyway, uh, I, I still have copies of that book. I, I think I did five hundred. 
Oh shit, that's cool. Self, a self publisher also. Yeah, but the self, the average self publisher, there most a lot of people are self publishing. The average, I read this, is the average self publisher sells about two hundred and fifty copies of the book, and a lot of them are print print on demand, so they don't have two hundred and fifty copies or a thousand copies sitting in their homes. Yeah, print on demand is a lot different, you know. But I think then you make less money, probably. I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The and, either, anyway, um, I studied literature, and I was I was an avid reader, and I got a master's in English. And uh, along the way, I got into the visual arts, and I, and I'm just a news junkie now. I'm just fascinated by what's happening in the world. I just because I know a lot of the countries. You know, I spent time in Europe. I spent time in Africa. Um, I I did a lot of trips into Mexico. A anyway. When you've been to these places, that's somehow a tie, you know, and you you feel a tie. Even if you just pass through, even if you just changed planes, it's like you, you know, yeah, travel, exactly. travel, traveling's a wonderful, great thing. Well, you've been all over, and um, is there any place right now that kind of in the news that's on the news that kind of makes you kind of upset or like bring seeing how it is at the moment? Well. Yeah, that's a whole conversation. <laughs> hey, how long have we been talking? We've been talking a while, right? Yeah, it's been like 40 minutes. Still got a little. If you, if you want, we can, um, if you have, if you don't have enough time, we can. Um, well, my mouth got dry. Day. My mouth got dry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can set up another day. I mean, because I do, I do have to go to work too. Since yeah. I have. It's like you say, we all have to make money somehow, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, so the whole to... money story. Yeah. <laughs> We're all part of this this nasty machine, so unfortunately well, I have to go make it. Otherwise, we have to grow our own food and be self-sufficient. Hey, I mean, and that's, you know, I I do, I do garden, to... and a good many of the things I plant don't make. <laughs> I'm, I don't read directions, you know. Yeah. And directions are in, uh, really important when you're gardening. I think it's also your location. Since you're kind of right by the mountain, it's kind of hard to garden since it's like kind of the soil's kind of bad, right? Yeah, the soil, yeah, the soil's, yeah, the soil's nothing. But, you know, you enrich it, and I don't enrich it enough. <laughs> yeah, also, you know, I'm so engrossed in, in, in watering it during growing seasons, I forget to, to give, give fertilizer. And hey, fertilizer is uh, the key, right? Right. Oh yeah, man. Or just um, if you boil like potatoes or something or rice, just use that water from like from the veggies, and you could throw no, it in there. It's like no, some I'm extra talking, potassium. No, I'm talking about the time that it takes to. Uh, oh, okay. I don't. I don't. Because I'm trying in this big house and my art and 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 my yeah, and and a bunch of things. Well, you got um, a lot going. I mean, art takes, I mean, you have a lot to um, curate, well, I guess. Well, it's yeah, like, right. a little museum in here that you have, man. Oh, yeah, so much. But <clears throat> my two-dimensional pieces, uh, it's, uh, what I'm having to do is document the, uh, the sculptures now uh, the, and because that's what the Kohler people are interested in. And that's what I'm most interested in because I spent a lot of money in uh, casting my pieces. There's a, I used a foundry in Juarez, a, fa a family um has a foundry and um so what exactly is a foundry that's where you oh can... okay okay the, the process should i talk about the process of making yeah, these bronzes kind of... okay i start with a form and i put clay on it and the clay is is an oil-based clay that doesn't dry so i can give and take um unlike let's say a carver of wood or a carver of stone you know oh oh gosh there goes the nose you know, <laughs> <laughs> got to do a different direction now. Like, <laughs> now I'll put the nose behind his head. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> if you look at my sculptures, I put the I put the nose behind the head. Yeah, you put body parts everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's because we're all complicated, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah. I did my um my style was faces within faces, and it's it's almost car caricature, uh, because they're they're um they're pen and ink and then i fill in the colors uh -huh. and um and um anyway if you go if you go to see my show you'll see i also in photography i did double exposure uh photography um 
and there's an exhibit of my photography. There's a, an exhibit of uh, a bunch of things that I've done over the years. Oh, nice, man! So, so, yeah, so there's quite a, quite, a bit, quite a bit to see if if you if you're into imagination, because my work is all about imagination. No, I know. Yeah. Like I say, you just look at your piece, and it just like your mind kind of starts opening, and you just feel like it working, and your imagination running. Well, I like, just do a lot of noses and eyes and tits and <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. and penises and you know all the but all those some... body parts. Of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we got some body parts, you know, right? You know, I don't know what it is, but something this... about it, tri- there's like a trippiness, a tri- almost a trippy aspect to it. And well, it that's just... that's what I say. The work is intuitive because I start with a line and then I create the piece. Um, and the same with the sculptures. I start with an empty form and I start putting clay on it. And I let the I let the faces and I let the thing build itself. So they, like you don't you don't know how they're going to look originally. You just let them kind of form out, and then you bring. Them well, out. I just did faces, and I did faces all the way around, so my pieces are in the round. <laughs> well, there's a story about that at the museum. They have my pieces against the wall, so you can't see that they're in the round. Yeah. And I tried to get the I tried to get <sighs> the assistant curator to pull them out from the wall a little bit, so you could see them. The, back, ah. the backs are the fronts and the sides are the fronts <laughs> and everything. Yeah, and, and the reason I did that with my sculpture was uh, I made them intricate because um, I was in no hurry because it, cost, it was costing me money and I liked the process. I liked the process playing with the mud, right? It's pretty primitive. An oil-based uh, clay that doesn't dry. And to soften it, I can put it out in the sun for a little while, or I can put a tiny bit in a in a microwave for a few seconds. And anyway, you can work it. And I can work in my living room, and you know. And the big pieces oh, yeah. I worked in my studio. I've got a big studio behind this house. Anyway, um, so then uh, then uh, once I form the piece, I make a a, a rubber mold. It's a paint on mold. And then I make a support mold, like a plaster mold that keeps the keeps the rubber from flopping around. Right, otherwise it would flop around. Yeah. <laughs> keeps okay. And then I can pour cement in it, and then the next day I can open it up and I have the piece in cement. And you can see some pieces here that are made in cement. And if I want a bronze, I can I pour a hot wax into the mold, and it solidifies from the outside in. And um, and um, I let that a day or so, and then I open it up, and and the hot wax has become hard. It's a special wax, and I can even work on that wax if I want to change anything, or you know, yeah. or make some some features a little stronger. Anyway, that wax is put into another mold, and in, in, into a plaster mold, um, and the wax is burned out. So it's back to negative. Oh, shit. And then the bronze is poured in. So it's oh, positive. Wow. I start with the positive. I make the negative mold. And with the negative mold, I make the wax, which is a positive mold. The wax is put into another mold, and then it's melted out. And the bronze is poured in at like 1,200 degrees or something like that. Damn, that's such a... It's a process. That it's, is a it's, process. It's, but it's an it's industrial like... process. and it, So I did it in Juarez. It was nearby... And um, and I did a lot of trips to wars, and I was, and I, I had been working in the pawn shop, and I was making a lot more than I had been making in the library in in Philadelphia, and um, and it was nearby, and you know I was spending money, and uh, it was cool, cool thing. The last piece I made was in two thousand and ten, so that's twelve years ago. It's the in last the, bronze it's, piece you made. Uh, yeah, it's out in the garden. It's two two figures uh, holding each other. They're they're dancers. Oh yeah, that one's pretty, man. People think it's soldiers, and I think, come on, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't. Like, <laughs> I don't have a cable war. I don't like that. Uh, shit. Yeah, I, I don't like the military. Oh man, this country drains all its money on the military. Well, that's all yeah, it is. We're just the military dogs of the world. But not only that, it's a lot of graft. You know, it's a lot of. Uh, well, we're supporting a lot of corporations. And oh that, yeah, that's and that, true. And that and that money can go somewhere else. And if the, these people are research people, they can research something else. They don't have to research weapons and, exactly. and airplanes. Just the best projectile. It just seems like it's all just going into like the better projectile, better projectile. It's like it's all the same though. Like yeah, how much better? <laughs> how much better can you can you have? And they've got the better projectile too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
So like, both oh. guns are pointing at each other continually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's what an idiot world watching this whole thing <laughs> about Putin and Ukraine is so sad. I mean, this guy, at a time when the world needs to be unified, really unified, it's getting less unified. Yeah, it's I really mean, become become east 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 and west. That's the uh, that's people in power. They see if they see an opportunity, if they're corrupt, and they see an opportunity and weakness, they'll take it. You know. Oh it's yeah. Horrible. Oh yeah. Or they've got machine the machine, you know their their propaganda machine and their money and money money's a, money's a biggie. Look at Trump. Trump had a lot of money. A total fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but like you said, that he understood and that criminal. propaganda. He and, understood that oh, propaganda. He it's had, crazy. He he read those propaganda books next to his bed, supposedly. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I bet, man. No, oh, I don't yeah. doubt it. Like, yeah, he he was, he was a. If he, yeah, anything, he, he, he might he, be an idiot in elsewhere, but like in terms of propaganda and getting yeah, control of the he, media, he, he he's a genius in that. That's disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> well, he knew how to do it. He'd been on television for a All long right. time. All you have to do is just be a little outrageous and. Well, People it takes a, it takes a lot though. Yeah, and that's you got to be. He, he was a New Yorker. If you're a New Yorker, you might do you know, national things. Yeah, it uh, just had the state of our politics. That's just an entertainment. That it's officially an entertainment like system. Yeah. Like it's not. It's a it's, joke. Yeah, it's pa- pablum. It's crap. Yeah. Hey, well, we we got to cut this. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, and um, thank you for doing your art too, man. Hey, thank you too. And um, just one more question. Is there anything, uh, any advice you would have to give people that want to pursue art? Yeah, do it the rest of your life, but you're not going to make any money at it. <laughs> I mean, it's gratification. It's really wonderful. I, I have a theory that a lot of people have, have children, and that becomes their art, especially if they care about their children. Um, and children demand a lot. And uh, and then you got to make a living because you got to feed your children. Yeah. Right. If you graduate from college with a liberal arts degree, you might get thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars a year. If you graduate as an engineer or in the science fields or, you know, those fields, you you get a job for a hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> but you can make that amount also as a plumber, as a, as an electrician. Yeah, exactly. There's still yeah, trades. Yeah, you can there are do. trades where you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you don't even have to go to college. Yeah, exactly. We've been fed that they have to go to college since. Well, I was fed that a lot, and then I don't have. I'm right now. I'm trying to get a new trade, like a butcher trade. So, so yeah, college you doesn't always work. Yeah, man. yeah, oh yeah. Always be butcher. So. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> don't be afraid of trades, people. And um, if you're going to pursue art, just do it for yourself and don't be expecting uh, monetary gain. It's <laughs> the point of the story. And, no, the thing is, um, you know, we have keywords like that's a, uh, an internet word, keyword. My, one of my keywords is fun. <laughs> you know, gratification, you know, fun. and be po- and positive, being positive. Yes. Yeah, I'm dying. I have cancer. But I'm trying, you know, as long as the pain doesn't become overwhelming, which is... Yeah, and you can't even know that you're yeah. pretty positive. Like you say, you're a fun, well, positive well, guy, man. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, it's, it's life is fun. Hell yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad yeah. you have that, that feedback. Well, also, also you're going to find some way to make a living. Being on the streets is not fun. Yeah, you still have to... In this, in this society, we do want... We do need shelter and food. We still need the basics. Yeah, really. Yeah. I was going to say Pavlov's dog. It's not it's Pavlov's dog. What's the what's the hierarchy called? Ah, who did that? The, the five. Was it Maslow? Ma- Maslow. Yeah, Maslow's okay, yeah. hierarchy of what we need in life. Mm-hmm. And the the ones that are on the bottom, you need to make sure those are satisfied first. You need the yeah. food, the shelter, the shelter, and people. Like even in human contact too, you need some kind of social contact. That's pretty yeah. on the bottom of the list. Yeah, except when you're a private artist. If you're a writer. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, people who write novels, you know? Can you imagine? They isolate for a day for years sometimes. A guy like Stephen King, you know, everybody knows that name, Stephen King. How many how many books has he written? I, I mean, I don't know how many books he's written, but they're big names. Yeah. People who just knock them out. Mystery writers, knock them out. Hey, bye. All right. Hell yeah. Thank you, Hoveran, and okay, hope you have a good day. Stevan, you too. Take care, man. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.